Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. My name is Nick Coffey. Today we have the definitive guide for you for making your blue beam a little bit faster. There are a lot of tips and tweaks depending on what your problem is, but these three won't take you but a minute to do, and they will make you stop feeling like you gotta tear your hair out because a blue beam is driving you nuts. The first is fairly simple. This is for all NVIDIA users. If you're using a blue beam regularly, if you're working uh, in big sets, multiple monitors, you should probably you're probably using an NVIDIA graphics card. So, buried deep in the settings in your uh, NVIDIA control panel, which you can find down here in your taskbar by clicking this up, you'll see it here. You're going to say, right-click on it and select NVIDIA control panel. Okay, then once that loads, you're going to go over to manage your 3D settings. You're going to select power management mode, and you're going to select set that to prefer maximum performance. For whatever reason, there is a slight uptick in the time that it takes to start really kick that video rendering in if this is set to optimize or any of the other settings, really. So obviously, this is going to cost you a little bit more and your power bill, but I think that's well overcome by the amount of time you save. We did actually do a little bit of testing on this, and it was markedly noticeable. It's not, you know, all of a sudden going to fix all of your problems, but hopefully with the next two tips, you will be much, much happier with your Bluebeam performance. All right, so the next tip has to do with sets where you've done a lot of work. There are a lot of markups in it. Over time, those markups begin to slow down Bluebeam performance. I don't know why. It's something to do with the processing, but what you can do is you can turn all of that junk off for a while and still preserve all your data. The way to do that is you're going to go into document and you're going to select flatten. Now the next step is really important. Don't forget to select allow markup recovery on flatten. So if you don't, you're going to lose all that data. You're not going to be able to delete that stuff. It's going to be lost to you forever. Hopefully you're using a uh, document storage device, a cloud storage device like Bluebeam or not Bluebeam, like Google Drive or Dropbox that does versioning so that you can recover your document if you happen to lose it and do something stupid like this. I recommend both of those products highly. Um, but if not, you're just up the creek. So make sure you do select allow markup recovery on flatten, then you're going to flatten this. Now, I'm going to speed this process up video wise. This takes a couple minutes. All right, so once that's done, you'll notice that you're no longer able to select your markups. They don't have data. They're just flattened, basically, as if they're not even there. They're part of the PDF, but your performance will increase drastically. So once you're done with a sheet, once you've done your takeoff, you've done your checkoff notes, flatten it, and the rest of your document will be much, much faster. Okay, the second tip, and probably the most valuable one, always bury the lead, is for those documents like these, we found a great example for you where they render extremely slowly for whatever reason. We think based on our research, right, that it has to do with processing both a vector image and a raster image at the same time. Vectors and rasters are a little bit different in that vectors maintain all of the data about the underlying objects, whereas rasters is just basically a dot by dot redrawing of an image, pixel by pixel, okay? The documents that seem to perform the worst in Bluebeam are ones that contain both vector and raster data, like this one. You'll see as I scroll through this just how brutally slow this is. And you can watch on the progress bar, it does two separate renders. First, the raster image, and then the vector image. And as you go through this set, you'll see it doing that every time and just how slow that is. Okay. So what we're going to do, again, this is going to cause you a little bit of data loss in that you're not going to preserve the true vector nature of it. But if you're working with a set frequently, it is well worth the cost. These drawings are still perfectly workable after conversion, perfectly visible. You just lost some of that underlying data. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a simple save as. And you're going to select the file type of TIFF. Okay, TIFF is a pure raster format. So it's going to lose all of that vector data, but it's only going to process it in one bit. There are other uh, raster image types in here, but they all have varying problems in that a lot of them, instead of creating one big image, they're going to take and do what's a mosaic of 100 small images. And you can actually see that in rendering if you go ahead and try and do that. You'll see 
Bluebeam go ahead and process each image individually and paste them all together. And that's a bad thing because it slows down your performance. So once you've done this, I've already done this through Movie Magic, you'll see that this same set performs much, much faster. You can scroll page to page, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, but you'll, you will notice too, once you zoom in, that it's not a perfect true crisp line. This is because you've lost that vector image data, whereas in the other set, which will take a while, no matter how far you zoom in, those lines stay clear, they stay crisp, you don't see any of that what's called rasterization. You won't see it become pixelated. So switch that to a, a save as TIFF and then convert it, open it back up as PDF right in Bluebeam. You just go to right click open and you're going to set your file type to all files and you'll see the TIFF file in there and you'll be able to import that. It'll open it as a PDF and all of your problems will go away. I hope these tips have been helpful to you. I know they were very helpful to us. We spent a lot of time over the years trying to figure out what is the best way to get rid of that extra data and get a set that is workable. Over time, it can save you real money. So that's it for today. We hope to see you back here on the Steel Forum.